Morning, Mr. Wolfett. Morning, boys. Well, how's the United States postal business, Mr. Wolfett? Well, you know the mail business. Always something new going on. Well, I got a package for you. Hey, great. Hey, look at the size of that. What do you think? I got an excitement down at the post office yesterday, let me tell you. Yes, sir. Here you are, Spiffy. Prove it. Oh, what happened? You did some naughty pictures sent through the mail? What, yeah, 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 yeah. what were the naughty pictures? Eight by tens in color. No. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, what kind of naughty pictures? Big eight by ten colored pictures of naughty pine trees. You get it? <laughs> Very funny. Hold on, a young fella. Don't go away, man. I got a big, big package for you. Come all the way from Chicago. My new oh, golf yes. club. They changed. Just in time for the club tournament today. Oh, he's been waiting. See you tomorrow. Boys, yeah. and don't forget, as they say down at the post office, write a letter to your mother today. She might be lonesome up there in that penitentiary. <laughs> <laughs> My sister Mary Frances had a little baby girl. Hey, really? Yeah, it says enclosed one of those new instant color snapshots of baby. Well, let's see it. Hey, come here. Come on, where's the color? <laughs> oh, P.S. Sorry, Stanley. The snapshot fell in the morning load in the washing machine. The pictures turned out pretty bad, but we have the only baby on the block wearing Technicolor diapers. <laughs> Aren't they beauties? Mm, yeah. Oh, brand spanking new, and I intend to keep them that way. <laughs> Ooh, look at the feel of that shaft. Are they gorgeous? Oh, that's a thing of beauty, sir. What's the cost of fortune? Uh, never mind what they cost. Stop that, Pruitt. Stop touching it. Golf clubs, aren't they? I mean, they're going to touch the ground sooner or later. <laughs> I can help it. Look at that finely tempered shaft, Doc. Some other time, Wally. Yeah, I want to read my mail. Wait, wait for me. Uh, Pruitt! Sir. Now, I command you to stand here and look at these pubs. Gosh, I can't, sir. The other guys will accuse me of apple polishing with the boss. They're very nice. Though, sir. I didn't want to show them to you anyway. Non golfers. Beautiful, shiny, gorgeous. Gosh, Doc, you can get shine here. The first in a series of test matches got underway today at Lowell. Oh, winning the top. Hey, imagine that. Boy, that's a powerful little thing, isn't it? please, so that we can enjoy breakfast. Hey, you guys. Have I got a surprise for you this uh, morning, huh? What's all Look this? Look at this. Look at this. It was my idea. I thought it would give the counselor's table a little class to have menus. Hey, hey. menus. Hey, wow. Wow. You is he style, getting snappy, huh? huh? Well, that's very charming, Malden. Let's see what's on the menu for breakfast. Uh, first course, canned tomato juice. Main course, bread with peanut butter, chunky stuff. And coffee or milk. Oh, well, you've got quite a spread here, Mom. <laughs> Good thing you had the menus printed up. We could never remember all that. <laughs> well, you see, you have a choice there. Where? There. You can either have the chunky style peanut butter or the smooth kind. <laughs> Your uh, order, sir? Yes. Well, let's see. I think I'll start with the canned tomato juice. Yes, then I'll have the bread with the uh, smooth style peanut butter. And coffee, please. He orders beautifully, doesn't he? <laughs> Obviously a gourmet of the old school. Uh, your order, fellas. What would you recommend? Oh, it's all good. It's all tasty. All right, I'll have some of that. Yeah, that's good. I'll have, <laughs> have what? Uh, what did you order? Well, whatever you want. Just bring it out. It'll make any difference. It's all slop anyway. Slop? <laughs> what do you mean, slop? I mean, listen, wait, that's that's what I mean. bring the peanut yeah, butter. Yeah, what is it? Sir, I worked my fingers to the bone out there trying to keep this kitchen clean, and you call it slop. I've got nothing to do with it. boys, stop that fighting. I just won't have it. <laughs> well, look who's here. Hi there, fellow cat. Campers. Hi there, hi. Hello, Hi. Miss Strudecker. Hi, Stanley. Oh, boy. <laughs> Thanks, Spiff. I needed that. Goodness, does he always shake like that? Not around fellas, I don't. Uh, well, perhaps I can explain this rare medical phenomenon of Pruitt's. You see, my dear, obviously when he looks at you... Yes? Mm -hmm. Looks at you. Yes, Doc? It's all right, 
for me. I'm a doctor. Well, fellows, we hate to break in on your breakfast this way, but we're all out of sugar over at our camp, and I was wondering if we could borrow 10 pounds. Madam, we'd be delighted to lend you as much sugar as you need. Anything to help our fellow campers across the lake. Uh, well, usually we have plenty of everything. Our girls use up all our sugar. They're making Definity fudge. We don't have any sugar left at all. Oh. This morning we had to use cocoa on our cornflakes. Oh. We'll be happy to help you if you ever need our assistance. I have to say it, Commander. You exemplify the camp code of help thy fellow campers. Oh, well, look, we're all up here in the wilderness. We have to help each other. What's gotten into him? Oh, he's a regular boy scout. You know, I've met some fine human beings in my time, but you're something special. Oh, well, thank you, madam. It's Miss. I think it's right. But tell me, does Mrs. Wivenhoe get up to call on you now and then? There's no Mrs. Wivenhoe. You mean you're a bachelor? Yes, I still prowl the woods alone. <laughs> Thanks, Wally. I needed that. Why don't you help us carry that huge, heavy bag of sugar out to our Jeep? My, you have such strong biceps. Did you see my halo, mate? I think she's getting a crush on your commander. Oh, come on. You can get a too crush on old Tiger Ender. He's fat, 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 fat. Love has nothing to do with one's appearance. Love is an emotional experience caused by the cognition of free nerve endings activated by organic changes from incipient withdrawal responses. <laughs> Why are you all staring at me? Where in the world did you learn that? At Oxford. I was a Rhodes Scholar. You were a Rhodes Scholar? You studied in England? Yes. That's where I learned to speak so perfectly. <laughs> Once again, Commander, how deeply indebted we are to you. Oh, please feel free to call on us at any time. We'll look after each other's camps. It's the camaraderie of the woods. You're truly a fine human being. Thank you, ma'am. Come on, Chris. come over you, sir. Well, are you sick or something, Wally? You always hated the idea of women campers. Well, I've been reading a lot of Spinoza and Stephen Spender and St. Thomas Aquinas lately, and I've decided to change my image. Yes, I used to be irascible and cantankerous, but that's all behind me now. I'm going to get to know my fellow man. I'm going to be calm and smile a lot and learn to love my fellow camper. <laughs> no more screaming temper tantrums for me. <laughs> about a thing. Uh, you just go out there and have a nice golf game, and I'll take care of punishing Everett. Oh, thank you, George. You know how important this tournament is to me. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, the camp's in your hands. Oh, we'll take care of it. In case of any emergency, call me at the club. Oh, no, sir, that's ridiculous. I mean, it's a beautiful day, sunny. What kind of an emergency could we have? Yeah, well, you're right, I guess. Yeah. So long. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, it's time for hobby and craft. Stock, do you want to call the kids? What? What? <laughs> yeah. I got to go to the dispensary. Drew, you call the kids. <laughs> Kids! All right, now look, when you sew the sole to the top side, you've got to pull that leather thong very tight, you see? Otherwise, you'll get a sloppy-looking moccasin like Arthur here. Yeah, that's good. Everett, now what the heck is that? I made it the way you told me to. Everett, you're supposed to make two moccasins, not just one big one. <laughs> now you got to start all over again. Now, get George, George, come here, I want you. What are you trying? Don't argue with me. Come well, here, come here. I want you to come here and shut up and listen, will you? Across the tidelands and into the valleys and hills by afternoon. The winds are expected to reach gale capacity by 2 p.m., and the hurricane should hit shortly after 3 o'clock. Hurricane? That's what I want you to hear. The government has just issued the order closing all schools and camps. Children are to be sent home at once. Now, here's Charles Deering with a further report on Hurricane Diane. Now, look, let's just keep calm. We don't want to alarm them. Now, look, through it, you and the guys get the kids back from the heights and up on the lakes, right? Doc, you get the transportation lined up in the assembly area so we can get ready to go. Right, right. Hey, wait a minute. What about war? Well, I hate to bother the commander on his golf tournament, but this is an emergency, right? I'll get him on the phone, call him, get him back here on the double, right? Right, right. And we'll be back in 10 minutes with further reports on the approaching hurricane. Remember, stay calm. Do not panic. Until later, this is... 
is Rodney Asquith on station WXIU in the heart of the shopping center of downtown Bombay, India. <laughs> going on? Didn't they tell you, sir? Tell me what? I was just teeing off at the fourth when I got the message to rush back here. What the devil's going on? <laughs> Didn't they know about the hurricane at the clubhouse? What hurricane? Oh, uh, you better come with me, sir. As the entire area boards up windows and braces itself against the devastation soon to be unleashed. Latest reports put the hurricane about 40 miles to the east, traveling toward us swiftly. Well, Lord, Smith, you were right. It's awful, awesome, isn't it? Well, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to get on the train. Just stay where you are. We need every able-bodied man we can get. Get them all. Outlying stations. Further government suggestions recommend the dismantling of surfaces which might offer resistance to the horrendous winds. Flat surfaces such as windows, billboards, or tent sidings should be removed at once. Tent sidings, that's that. Personnel in outlying areas should dig hurricane trenches where they can take shelter until the Holocaust has passed. All right, you heard the man. Let's get started. Hey, right. Four men can dig a shallow trench right here. Yeah, Doc, uh, get them all in. Strip those tents. Start over there. All right. Hi, in the car. Let's go, boys. Oh, good. Bring shovels. Sir, sir, we yes. forgot something. We've got to go across the lake and warn the girls. Oh, care. heck on them. In an emergency like this, it's every man for himself. But, sir, what about the camaraderie of the woods? I'm looking after my camp. With Stephen Spender and, and, and Spinoza. I mean, the new you, oh, sir. Oh, George, that's unfair to say to me at a time like this. What would St. Thomas Aquinas do, sir? Well, I'm not... Well, I wouldn't. All right, I'll telephone. Yeah, you know, all right, sir. St. Wallace with him, ho. <laughs> Hello? Hello, get me Cap Divine and hurry. Yes, I'll hold, but please hurry. So there's a hurricane coming, and we've got to warn the girls' camp. Well, I guess you're right, George. It's our duty to go tell them. That's right. <laughs> song we could all sing oh, together. Oh, we just like them all, don't we, George? Oh, whatever the girls want to sing, fine. Yeah. All right, let's do Mary Had a Little Laugh. Oh, that's oh, good. Right. All righty. <laughs> and a one, and a two. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little... What are we doing? <laughs> Quiet! Now shut up, everybody! What kind of a way is that to act? Madam, I came over here to tell you there's a hurricane coming. A hurricane? Yes, yes, we heard it on the radio. We came over to warn you. We're digging a shelter trench. If you get caught, you come over to our camp. Oh, thank you, Commander. Both the action. Both the action. There they go. Well, that's the last of the boys, Wally. My beautiful camp. Stripped of her glory. <laughs> Standing there all naked and bare. Well, that's enough of that. We did what we had to do. Any news about the hurricane, Doc? Well, he said they expect to arrive about 3 o'clock. 20 minutes. That gives you just time enough to get into town, gentlemen. Keys are in the car. I want to thank all of you for being so courageous in the face of a crisis. We were a grand team. Wait a minute, sir. Aren't you going with us? No, George. This is my baby. I can't walk away from it. I'm going to go down with the camp. Well, see you around, Wally. So long, Doc. See you come back. Ruin. George, you've been the finest executive officer I've ever had. Goodbye, sir, and good luck. Thank you. Oh, 
Oh, wait a minute. We we can't just walk out on him. We're not walking out. We have the car. <laughs> well, we can't just leave him there all alone. He wants to stay. Yeah, you heard him. He probably likes her. <laughs> come on, George, let's go. No, no, if you guys want to go, you go ahead. I'm going to stay. Oh, but come on. Stay. No, no, I can't desert him. Okay. If you're going to stay, I'm going to stay. Moog, you going to stay? I'm going to stay. True? Guess who's going to be the party pooper? <laughs> So long, uh, crew. Bye, crew. So long, crew. Let's we'll see you out. Uh, hey, you changed your mind? You're going to stay? I had to. I just realized I don't know how to drive. <laughs> We decided to stay and see it through with you. Oh, boys, it's, I'm deeply touched. You're a grand bunch of fellows, and I won't forget it, George. I couldn't leave you, sir. Doc, that's okay, Wally. Oh, but, oh what the heck. <laughs> and Stanley. Don't thank me, sir. I couldn't drive. <laughs> Everything in the camp is lashed down. We just wanted to look in on you on our way to town. Are you all right? Oh, we're fine. Yeah, we're staying. But that's dangerous, isn't it? Do you think that's why? Well, you can get killed. Listen. We're reported badly damaged, and the first casualties have been removed from the area. The cyclonic winds are now beginning to buffet our station. We advise all civilians to take cover. Do not stand in open areas. You girls will never make it into town now. Everybody into the trash. Get your things if you Move all your gear forward so there's room for the goat. You guys shore up this trench? He didn't tell us to do just now. Boys, you always shore up a trench. Even a doom corp knows you shore up a trench this big. <laughs> Listen. So those of you who have your trenches dug, be sure and drive iron stakes or steel rods into the earth to retain the walls. Steel rods are the safest material. <laughs> That's pretty stupid out here in the middle of nowhere. Where would we get steel rods? <laughs> can you hesitate? Human lives are at stake. I only got to play with them once. Four holes, uh, two, three bars. Just little pieces of steel. Think of that. Yeah, we'll all be buried alive when the trees start falling. Well, there must be something else. Malden, how about your kitchen? No. Doc, the dispensary. No. Nope. Sir, the decision's up to you. Now, there's seven of us here. Seven human lives against a set of golf clubs. The decision rests with you. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Men and women, oh, I'm ashamed of you. I am too, Wally. You know what has to be done. Now, let's do it. Maybe you could sell 
them to somebody with long arms. Oh, just shut up. <laughs> well, that does it, fellas. We can get back in now. <laughs> All right, now we're all safe. I think we owe Commander Wivenhoe a little tribute for sacrificing his new golf clubs to save our lives. Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Oh, shut up! So what kind of an attitude is that when we all took our time to hip, hip, hooray? Well, I don't want any hip, hip, hoorays. I want my golf clubs. <laughs> oh. You think they went for such a good cause. We're all going to live now. What good is living to a golfer if he has nothing to play golf with? I scraped and saved for five years to buy these clubs. And we've just received word that the water is rising and there is every possibility that the banks of the Ganges River may overflow. Ganges <laughs> River? Station WXIU is about to leave the air, but first, these last-minute instructions from your government. Be sure personal belongings are lashed down securely. Everything lashed down? Yes, sir. Groups in outlying areas who may be exposed to the winds hold hands and huddle together. All right, everybody. Just hold hands. Here we go. It's coming. And one last precaution. Be sure your elephants are tethered. Right, and you heard him. Let's get out and tether our elephants. What's he talking about? We want to wish all of you the very best of luck. We're going off the air now until after the hurricane. Till later then, this is Roger Asquith signing off from station WXIU in the heart of a shopping center in downtown Bombay, India. <laughs> Did he say downtown Bombay, India? Part of the shopping center. Bombay, India. It's in India. Powerful little thing, isn't it? Sure is powerful, all right. Good reception, boy. <laughs> yep. Clear, huh? Clear, clear. Yeah, clear. Clear as a bell. Stripped all the tents. Stripped and barely. Except the little kids. All the kids. My crops. My new golf cars. Uh, anybody else hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. Oh, yeah, I oh, why don't we just stroll over to the mess hall and see if there isn't something there we can make a sandwich? Hey, I could amble over there with you, I think. Yeah. <laughs>